Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my messy workbench. Now if you are new to this channel, I've never been here before, you probably don't know this, but the workbench being a mess is kind of becoming a trend here because it's always a mess. So today I'm going to be turning this ordinary door closer into a pneumatic actuator. Now uh, there's a number of reasons you might want to do this. Uh, they're useful for a variety of things, but I'm going to be using it for Halloween. Uh, Halloween is only about a month or so out, so hopefully I'll get this video up in time to be of use to some people. Uh, surprisingly enough, there's only a couple videos I've come across on YouTube about this, so I'm showing mine. And uh, I'm going to show you how I like to make a dirt cheap pneumatic actuator. So we've got a couple things here. Of course we have our, pneumati our uh, pneumatic door closer. You can pick these up from Walmart, Home Depot, wherever. This one was about nine bucks if I remember correctly from Walmart and then I've also got some fittings this is a uh, quarter inch MPT to quarter inch barb and then we got a quarter inch barb to one eighth MPT uh, one eighth MPT tap fractional bit set it's over here can you see it nope you can't there there's the fractional bit set if you're gonna be making things highly recommend you get a fractional bit set it is invaluable especially when you have to tap stuff the uh, required drill bit is an 11 30 seconds already on the drill. And I'm going to be using electronic controls for this. So I have this little actuator. You can pick these up on eBay. They're made, it's made by AirTac. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, yeah, about 10 bucks or less, depending on which one you get. So overall, we're going to be able to do this for less than 30 bucks. Uh, a lot of stuff I already have. Uh, this is just the stuff I had to buy. Uh, so we'll dive right into it, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to yank this screw out because we don't need that anymore. Just chuck that. Now the next thing, I'm going to just gently, very gently, clamp it into this vise because that cylinder is not that strong. Your protection. And what we're going to do is I'm going to cut off this little nub here, and that will reduce the amount of holes that we can use to anchor it but we're going to have to do that otherwise the hex is going to interfere with it you see it won't go in straight so we have to cut that off okay I got that piece cut off and trimmed down a bit so now the hex on our barb will have plenty of clearance now the factory bracket may or may not work. I haven't actually tried to use one of these after modifying a cylinder like this. You might be able to use it like that, although the hose clamp or the hose itself might get in the way once the uh, barb is on there. I'm not sure. So anyway, we're ready to drill it out now, but we want to make sure we don't hit the piston inside with the drill bit. So we need to extend it and lock it into place. And so to do that, I'm going to take the lock which will not be used in the final iteration. I'm going to use this drill bit through the hole to extend it and now we have it locked in the extended position. I'm going to wrap this in a rag give it a little extra protection because like I said this cylinder is not made out of the most durable metal in the world. I shouldn't say durable, it's just thin. So I'm just going to tighten it very gently. Get it out of the way, and we will drill the hole out. Okay, so my air hose is leaking in the background, so hopefully you can hear me well. I drilled it all the way through, like all the way through right into the chamber. Uh, this won't hurt it at all because the piston's all the way up here somewhere, uh, so he didn't hit it with the drill bit. The reason I drilled it all the way through is because I want to make sure that I can tap the hole deep enough. So you can see, I want to get the hole tapped deep enough so that when I put the barb in, it'll get tight right about when the uh, hex bottoms out. Uh, that way we have the most amount of threads grabbing. And uh, even once it's bottomed out completely, you can see it's not going to be intruding into the cylinder at all. 
So having drilled all the way in the cylinder doesn't hurt it at all. It just means that the hole is bigger. So now of course there's probably a bunch of metal shavings in there. So we'll take my compressor and blow out whatever we can. So now is the really tedious part, which is actually tapping the hole for the barb. And the reason this is so tedious is because it's really trial and error. You want to tap it and just keep checking it until uh, the barb sits where you want to. Um, like I said, I want the barb to sit right about here. So I'm basically going to have to tap it a little bit, take it out and check it and just keep doing that over and over again. So I know some people might have give me crap about not having any lubricant on the tap, but I mean it's aluminum for God's sakes. It's not like it's going to hurt the tap at all. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and check that. You see, now I know I need to tap it a lot more. Okay, so from here on out, it's basically going to be me just repeating that. Just keep tapping, checking, tap, check, tap, check. And just go slowly because if I tap it too much, what will happen is the hex will bottom out on the barb before the uh, threads get tight, which would be no good at all because then we'll never be able to get the threads tight and the cylinder will be ruined. So I'll come back when I've actually finally gotten it to where I need it to be. Okay, so got it tapped all the way down to the bottom. Unfortunately, for some reason, this particular uh, combination does not want to seem to thread in all the way until the bar uh, or until the hex bottoms out. I'm not really sure why it just doesn't, um, which seems a little odd because last time I did this, it did it wants to go to about there. So not what I wanted, but it'll work just fine. We still got several threads in there, so it should be good. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to use just some Teflon tape for this. There are different schools of thought on what you should use to seal compressed air fittings. I'm going with Teflon tape because I'm not too concerned about it and it's a lot easier than thread sealant. It won't get everywhere and waste thread sealant if I have to take it back out. Tighten that down. Alright, and I just need to collapse the cylinder and we can try it out. Alright, so let's give the uh, newly completed cylinder a test run. So we're just going to use the uh, air nozzle. We're running about 150 psi right now, which can be a tad much for a cylinder like this, but uh, I'm going to do it just to show you what happens. And then if you let all the air out really fast, it'll slam back really hard because of the spring. Now the speed at which this actuates ultimately depends on uh, what you're using it for and how much pressure you're putting to it. If you, for whatever reason, decide that you're crazy and you want to put more uh, pressure and air through it faster, you can actually uh, go with a bigger barb or uh, just get like a, a quarter inch, uh, eighth inch uh, MPT nipple and then you can uh, clamp a three eighths inch hose around that and essentially run a three eighths inch line uh, unrestricted all the way into the cylinder. I wouldn't really recommend doing that because you're probably going to blow the cylinder apart um, the way it is right now. More than enough power, more than fast enough for most things, at least in my own opinion. 
Now, uh, of course, this isn't going to be double acting, meaning it's not, it can't use air pressure to pull back. Uh, but because of the spring, uh, it can return uh, after it's been actuated. Uh, so this is uh, actually very useful for Halloween props, which is why I like it so much. So now we're not going to stop there, though. We need a control mechanism. So uh, this is the AirTac uh, solenoid valve I talked about earlier. You can get these for about 10 bucks off eBay. Uh, sometimes a little more, a little less, depends on which version you get. Um, so this particular one is a 110 volt uh, BSPT, that's British Standard Pipe Thread. It's not exactly the same as an MPT thread, but the only real difference is the pitch of the uh, threads. Um, all that really means is that they'll thread together just fine, but you need some thread tape to get this to seal, which is not a big deal at all. You can get an MPT version, but they cost a lot more and they're not as widely available. It's a lot easier to find these ones with the with the BSPT uh, threads. Um, this one, the reason I got a 110 volt uh, model is because I find it easier for actuating Halloween props. I have a, a remote control outlet that I use for Christmas and Halloween. So by using a 110, I can just put a plug on it, plug it into one of those remote outlets, and I can control it remotely. If you're gonna use some kind of computer control, you might be better off with the 12 volt version. So this is designed for a dual acting uh, pneumatic valve. Of course this isn't dual acting but it'll still work uh, just as well. So right here you have your air supply and then this is the return side. This is actuated when there's no power going to the valve and this one is the extension side. Uh, when you uh, activate the valve it puts air pressure to here and then we have these two little exhaust ports. So to make this work the way um, I want it to, with this cylinder, what I need to do is I'm gonna to have to plug off the A port, put my input to the P port, and then uh, the B port will go into my cylinder. And uh, I believe it's the S port will be our exhaust uh, for the air that comes back out when the cylinder retracts. Now we can either leave that open and it'll slam back, or uh, what I like to do is put a valve onto it and that way I can adjust how fast it, it comes back. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll plumb this all up and uh, show you what happens. The test rig is now plumbed up. I managed to scavenge some tube. Probably not the best tube for this purpose, but it will do for now. Um, you can see here, just like I said, I have my air source coming in through the P port. A port's blocked off. The B port leads to our pneumatic cylinder. The S port is our exhaust port. Unfortunately, I cannot get anything to fit on here without interfering with the uh, air coupling. Uh, so we're just letting it dump straight to the atmosphere with no restriction right now. Um, I managed to find this nice little plug uh, with a switch on it. And you can see the solenoid has a little LED in there to let you know when it's actuated, which is nice. So I can turn it on and off without having to unplug it or plug it back in. Now you will have to listen to some hissing when I do this because the coupler on my air hose unfortunately is worn out and starting to leak. But we can still demonstrate how it works. And I do have to hold this cylinder. I'm only running about 50 psi in this cylinder, but it doesn't take a whole lot of air pressure to actuate these things, so it does have some kick to it. Get another angle. And that's it. And like I said, this is only 50 psi. You can play with the pressures uh, to get your particular setup and whatever you're using to act the way you want to, but it really does not take a lot of pressure unless you're putting quite a bit of load on these things. My, uh, my other Halloween prop. Uh, I actually had to regulate the pressure down to about 30 to 40 psi just so it wouldn't try to tear itself apart. So you don't need a whole lot of uh, pressure to actuate these things. And like I said before, if you want to get it to actuate faster, you can play with the pressure or you can use a larger tube between the valve and the cylinder. Um, 
But that does it. It's a uh, cheap, uh, fairly easy, simple, and very effective uh, pneumatic cylinder made with just stuff you can order or find off the shelf.